Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale today. I am joined again by TNT. He's a Korean pro, one of the best in the game. You guys are in for a treat today. We're going to be uh, a spy here. We're going to eavesdrop on him playing right now a challenge, but we're going to switch to ladder. He's over 6,200 trophies, top 20 in the world right now. We're going to see him playing this deck on top ladder, and you know, win or lose, we'll bring you guys the uh, the replays and this is the best way to get be better as a player in my opinion it's just watching a pro play in real time and seeing the decisions that they make when they make them and then trying to replicate it yourself so that's why we're going to do this format guys i really want your feedback do you prefer this format kind of eavesdropping live on pros while they play or do you prefer kind of the old way where we have them on voice and we go over replays kind of in depth? Or of course, I can switch it up. As always, I really value value your feedback, guys. So this is the deck. It's kind of a new era Vietnam deck, bridge spam or punish meta archetype. It's a really, really strong deck. Let's face it, after the balance changes took effect, we learned that the new meta is really just more of the old meta with some tweaks. And one tweak that I really wanted to focus on in today's video, as you can see it in both decks, Zappies. TNT reached out to me. We originally were going to share a P.E.K.K.A deck with you guys, similar to this one, kind of a P.E.K.K.A spam control deck. TNT messaged me and he's like, no, no, no. Zappies. We need to share a Zappies deck because Zappies is one of the most underrated cards right now in the meta. And you know what? I think that judging by early gameplay that we've seen after the balance changes uh, in pros and leagues and CRL, I think that he might be right. I think that Zappies is definitely a great card that you can almost always get value out of. Even if you get a spell, a fireball out of the opponent, kind of bait it out, it still oftentimes frees you up to be more aggressive at the at the bridge with other cards knowing they don't have that big spell in hand either way defensively there's no doubt about it it's one of the strongest cards in the game especially due to the fact that prince is still everywhere it does well against hog it does well against tanks against giant and golem which are dominating the meta still so zappies definitely a card to consider even if you don't want to play this deck it's a card to consider adding to your deck to make it better. All right, so here we go. Dark Prince shutting down that right lane. Look at how strong this deck is defensively, guys. We're going to cover some strategy tips as we go through the video today like we always do. But keep in mind, guys, that, you know, this is a deck where you can be very patient with, especially in the first two minutes. Almost all of TNT's matches do go into sudden death overtime. It's just something to note especially in the first two minutes, even though it's called bridge spam, it doesn't mean you have to be spamming your cards at the bridge. As a matter of fact, you're really not gonna be doing that in the first two minutes, other than going up against a pump deck. If they pump, you can punish, obviously, with the ram or the bandit or whatever you think that they have, you know, depending on the deck that you're playing. So let's go ahead and switch over to ladder, guys. I will be back when TNT finds a match. All right, guys, so it looks like he's found a match. Let's hop right in here, and he's going against, ooh, Icarus from Wham Esports. Wham Esports, actually number one in the world. As of this recording, I am one day ahead right now. So as of this recording, the number one clan in terms of clan war trophies on the leaderboard. So shout out to the guys at Wham Esports. So it looks like there's going to be kind of a stalemate uh, starting out here. Now, this this deck can give you some kind of awkward starting hands where, you, where you'll have, like, a spell, a fireball, zap maybe and then battle ram and bandit you don't want to start with bridge spam as we talked about here uh even if you have an ice golem it's not ideal in this meta to start out with an ice golem in the back at least i don't prefer doing it because what you run into there is that you know you need the ice golem and zap to kill a lot of swarm troops and you need ice golem to kite as well very important card uh so i would uh well there he goes he, he drops the ice golem that's the beauty of live matches ladies and gentlemen so he does drop that ice golem him in the right I mean I, I kind of thank him for that because we don't want to watch two minutes of complete stalemate so here it goes it is going if it was a competitive match I doubt he would have started by cycling that ice golem but you can see right now we're just cycling in the back the opponent responds it looks like they're also playing Icarus also playing some sort of a bridge spam deck or of course it could be three musketeers we don't know for sure yet so here comes the bandit going to face off against two of those barbarians going to need something else there's the battle ram the battle ram is going to be answered by the dark prince however the princess tower does get a lot 
lot of damage against those two barbarians. So now we have a Dark Prince barbarian in the left. We have a bandit in the right. We're going to answer that beautifully there with a, oh, look at that. A beautiful kiting ice golem leading to the Dark Prince there. Going to clean everything up. Now we have a Dark Prince of our own that Icarus is going to be forced to answer. We actually do connect on that right tower with the Dark Prince. That does a lot of damage, that Dark Prince connecting. And, uh, and beautiful Zap there to stop that Battle Ram's charge. And look at Zappy. He's just doing some work here. We are going to drop that bandit in the back, help out. And then we're going to have a one, no, I was going to say one bandit, one Zappy uh, push. Looks like it's just going to be a solo bandit. But again, forcing the opponent to respond in this situation. So things are looking uh, pretty good. Uh, so far, so good here. And we're sitting pretty at 10 Elixir. But you guys can see what I'm saying here. In the beginning, when this, in, with, the, with this deck, excuse me, when you don't know what to do, it's always safe to cycle. You can cycle Dark Prince in the back. You can cycle Ice Golem in the back. You can go ahead and cycle and split your Zappies in the back as well. And you're going to see the tempo is incredibly important in this match. So here we go. It's a Battle Ram coming again in the right. We're going to respawn. We have an Ice Golem. We have a Bandit. We have a Dark Prince. Uh, meanwhile, our Inferno Dragon still just barely clinging to health. Now, finally, he's a dead. We go ahead and split lane push here. There's the Battle Ram. Does not connect in the left. We don't really get anything going in the right. Is he going to be able to stop this Dark Prince? It looks like he's going to. We go ahead and supplement that push with a Bandit. That's a little bit of bridge spam for you. We're forced the opponent to play a Battle Ram in a position where he didn't really want to play one. Meanwhile, we have two Zappies on that right tower, taking it down below 2,000 HP. We're going to cycle an Inferno Dragon in the back of the right side. We're going to go ahead and stop that Bandit before her charge. Really important, getting value out of those little situations like that. So now we have an Inferno Dragon in the right. Inferno Dragon and Ice Golem on both sides in the right. We do have a little push on the left. We get a Fireball out of the opponent. The Dark Prince is still going to continue his charge. He's actually going to make contact with that tower. There's going to be a lot of damage on that left tower. Dark Prince gets like three or four hits, but the opponent doing a wise thing, making us split our damage here. Now we need something in the left lane, guys. Here it is. Dark Prince, we cycle back to him. He's going to answer those barbarians. Meanwhile, we're going to use our battle ram to pull and kite the Dark Prince and the bandit to the right lane. Now we have another split lane push situation kind of in the works here. We drop Zappies as well. So we have Zappies in the right. We have the Inferno Dragon, but his Inferno Dragon is going to be mitigated by those Zappies. Let's see if we can get the Zappy on that Inferno Dragon. It looks like the opponent's doing a good job of spamming himself in that right lane. Meanwhile, we have a bandit. It's going to be match over is going to be a draw so that's a hey, guys like I said, it's a draw, but we will take it. You can see that he actually did a very good job applying the pressure throughout that entire match, but at the same time, not over committing and losing it. Let's go ahead and hop into another live. Be right back with you guys in just a sec. All right, guys, here we are. He's found a match. He is at 62.57 trophies right now going against Xiao from Deep Swamp. Let's see how he handles this next matchup. I hope it's not the same deck. Well, we start with a pump, so we know it's not. So we're going to immediately start punishing here. We go in with a Fireball and a Bandit. So I guess that would be TNT's ideal response to a pump. A little bit of Bridge Spam and the Fireball sent in as well. It's good to know how to handle these situations. Obviously, given the cards that he started out with, it could change depending on exactly what he had so the opponent does have a pump and a goblin gang and a giant so we know right away they're playing the three musketeer giant deck because no other giant deck runs pump right now in the meta it would be very uh, weird if the opponent and when we see bats we know the deck so tnt rest assured knows every card in the opponent's deck here it was a really nice block on that uh wow look at that three musketeers were able to cycle back to law getting that nice zap two on three musketeers uh to get them into death range and and look at these zappies just absolutely styming this giant in the right lane not even getting one hit here so we know i think we do have maybe like a one elixir disadvantage here so let's see how tnt deals with this oh the opponent forced to play a minion horde battle ram here this is going to be big but we have zap in hand we also have zappies we should be able to handle this so here it comes we have zap where's the zap where's the zap where's the zap do we even need it wow see look at this that's the difference between a pro and yours truly. I would have definitely overcommitted with the zap there. It looked like TNT didn't even need to. Uh, he did take a little bit of damage, but either way, we have a nice elixir lead here, forcing the opponent to play a giant when they probably didn't want to. We're going to get a lot of damage on that giant, but he does have bats in about a half health, a little bit more than that giant, kind of lumbering down the right lane. So how are we going to answer this? Well, Inferno Dragon time, baby. The opponent probably will pump here or wait to see what we do and then pump. You know they have pump in hand. Actually, I take that all back. Already at 57 seconds, 54. 
55 seconds. Of course, after 51 seconds in the match, you can't get value out of your pump. So there is the pump. We did call it. It looks like TNT is going to go all out here. Now look at this. He knows three Musketeer decks do not have any big spells. So we're going to spam, 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 get back to that zap spell. We have the Ice Golem placed really early. Ice Golem death damage will kill those bats and the remainder of those minions. Actually, one little minion does sneakily survive here. But look at this. That's how we put the pressure on. The opponent used the, uh, the Elixir Pump. And we're just pressuring, pressuring, pressuring in this situation. And then we're going to kind of release, like we said, the ebbs and the flows of the match here of the pressure, right? So we're going to release. And here it comes. It's three Musketeers split right down the center at the river there. The Dark Prince is, is going to get that hit off. Uh, or was it the Zappy? What killed that Musketeer? Anyway, we're going to let that Musketeer go in the left lane. The Battle Ram will not connect to that right tower. But again, we're going to put on some serious pressure here, guys. We are looking pretty good. We are spamming. We have six Zappies now. Six Zappies. I don't think they're just going to tear through the Minion Horde. Tear through those Goblins. The opponent has nothing. We're going to Fireball. That's going to end the match. Good game, TNT, baby gonna put us way in the top 20 let's check in see where he ranks right now 15th in the world man i wonder where he's gonna finish this season tnt's such a good player unbelievable guys he just shared a ladder match with me that happened right before this video i'm gonna promote him and then let's hop into that replay all right guys here we go let's watch which one should we check out here well we already saw uh, three Musketeer. Okay, so we already saw that deck. Let's let's check it out against the Hog deck. See how we do because Hog is everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, Hog popularity has gone up, 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 up in the week after the balance changes, or almost a week now. But let's uh, let's see where it kind of lands. TNT on the top this time, guys. And the opponent here playing the Hog Musky with Guards version. Uh, really solid deck that the opponent is playing. And they're a good Hog player as well, obviously, to be top 20-ish or so in the world. You gotta be, right? And it's uh, it's not 2.6. It's kind of a little bit of a heavier version with, of course, the Guards, as we just mentioned. So we, we start out with a Bandit, TNT does. And we're just gonna wait here. The opponent opts to go opposite lane with a Hog. We're just gonna respond with a Dark Prince, and then we'll play Zappies right in the middle. That's going to be nice because one of those Zappies will finish off that Musketeer just in case the opponent was going to get clever with uh, Ice Golem or something in front of that Musketeer. And then we're just going to continue to just be patient here at this point, guys. We don't need to go super aggressive. And look at how difficult just Zappies and a Dark Prince at like 10% health can be to stop in that right lane. Really, really good job there of TNT. You know, he doesn't need to. He can kind of pick and, and prod here. He knows exactly what deck the opponent is playing at this point. Uh, at that point, we're going to go ahead and uh, take... Yeah, I think the opponent defended a little bit more better than TNT had suspected there with just the cannon and a musketeer and then guards after the fact. Here comes another hog in the right lane. We have to zap that uh, that musketeer with just a sliver of health left. He is going to get two swings on that right tower again with hog. Remember, this deck will do better than the opponent's deck into double elixir time. So we're trying to mitigate the damage, trying to keep our towers alive, and then see what we can come up with in double elixir so the opponent flashing or i shouldn't say the opponent ah did you see my video yesterday guys about all the emotes man they drive me crazy i don't care about the opponent uh bming me i just care about all the uh, spectators so there goes the aggressive fireball by the opponent figuring they can cycle really quickly we're gonna go ahead and respond with an aggressive fireball of our own this time the ice golem not finishing off that uh musketeer but we're gonna go ahead and mount up a pretty good push here i think here is the Inferno Dragon in the back. Okay, so we're going to cycle. I, I stand corrected. So he lets that Dark Prince go, and then he cycles a, an Inferno Dragon in the back here. So we have a Bandit Inferno Dragon going into an Ice Golem and a Musketeer. We place a Ice Golem of our own. The Fireball misses everything there by the opponent. Our Fireball does connect onto that Musketeer. Inferno Dragon finishes her off. Now we have a couple Barbarians. We have a Bandit, a Dark Prince, and an Inferno Dragon all in the right lane there. Inferno Dragon does lock on to that right tower, forcing a zap out of the opponent. Bandit is going to get a charge in on the left tower with full health. 
The opponent better use guards. They do. It's down to 1744 HP on the left tower. We have an Inferno Dragon meeting up with that Musketeer. Perfect timing there to put that Musketeer into the Princess Tower range. Meanwhile, here we go. Battle Ram, Inferno Dragon. We're going to send in that Fireball on that Musketeer again. Inferno Dragon just barely touches that Musketeer to finish her off. Both of the towers are relatively high considering there's only 45 seconds left. At this point, the opponent is pretty much dead. They cannot win this match as long as we don't make any big, terrible mistakes. Here comes a bandit in the left lane. We have a couple zappies in the left lane as well. He's, the opponent's going to answer with a cannon in guards. We have a charging battle ram. The battle ram will connect on that right side. We avoided the cannon, taking it down to 100 damage. There it goes. It is down the barbarian, finishing it off. Wow, well done there by TNT. This guy is great, and the deck is really great too. So guys, go ahead and let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know if you have success with it, if you think this could be the new meta of Bridge Spam. I'm a big fan of this deck myself. So guys, huge thanks to TNT. Check out his information in the description below, his player stats and profile on StatsRoyale.com, a new partner here on CWA Mobile Gaming. Welcome to Steve and the Stats Royale team, and of course, huge Huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out Bren's information in the description below. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.